Good morning, I'm Rain Musni and welcome to Follow the Money, a show designed to spark financial literacy and cultivate a growth mindset. Join us as we explore the tools and insights you need to jumpstart your financial journey. This morning, we'll learn how to invest in real estate investment trusts, or REITs, from BDO Capital President Ed Francisco. In a nutshell, REITs provide a way to invest in real estate without having to directly own or manage properties. Here's Billionario News' channel anchor Mikey Oreta's interview with Ed Francisco. So far, investors have been shunning stocks in favor of bonds this year. Why should they be looking at REITs? Oh, good, good question, Mikey. REITs are, a, are in a way like a hybrid or a compromise because you're right, for equities, the, uh, the values can, can go down, which is what happened despite the good you know, returns of our uh, companies. No? It's just really sentiment driven. Fixed income, naman, the bonds are a fixed. You can get, let's say, for an Ayala, 5.5 to 6%. With the REIT, for example, a REIT, you can get around 7.4% yield. So a REIT gives you a, almost like a fixed income, a regular dividend yield, but it has upside because it's a pre appreciation of uh, property prices. So that's why it's a safe asset class. And uh, that's something also that uh, some of the investors, such as the insurance companies and uh, the trust companies of the banks have been investing in REIT because it's safer for their investors also. Yeah, it's, that's, it's that nice hybrid that they want. Okay, yes. so, um, let's start with an overview of the Philippine REIT market. How, mm -hmm. how did we do in the first half? And how are we poised to be now, given that the BSP is going to take a less hawkish, more dovish stance on monetary policy the second half? Okay, so in general, of course, the PSE index has basically remained flat. We were we had some gains in the first, first uh, part of the year, and then they've been erased. With the REITs, naman, uh, they've rel been relatively flat, okay, because their yields have been the same, very good. What happened though is that the prices went down when interest rates went up because they were hit. But since we're already in a high interest rate environment, the yields were roughly the same, prices were the same. So compared to the PSE, the rates have been up roughly around, have been up around five to six percent above the PSE, which is flat. So you overall, that's a safer asset class. It's been four years since Ayala's A REIT listed on the Philippine Stock Exchange. There are currently eight REITs in the country now. Um, how would you describe the pace of growth of the Philippine REIT market and and where are we headed? Okay, uh, it took a while for the REIT law or the IR to get implemented. Right, I was involved there uh, together with Francis Lim and some other lawyers and. Um, but once we got that settled, even with the SEC, as you notice, ARIT came out. And then And then maybe th three, four years ago, right, the flavor of the market was REITs. So nud so nud. That's when the, the, the next six or seven came out. And then uh, before, the, before the pandemic, we wanted to try a different kind of REIT because the first uh, seven were property related. I wanted to do an energy REIT, cash flows. So we were able to convince uh, Edgar Saavedra and his group to do City Core REIT. That's also done very well. The only reason it slowed down is because now when, uh, I guess when interest, when with the pandemic and then interest rates went up, it was more challenging to do REITs because you know, REITs have to have a premium over government yields. But since before government yields were say two, 3%, now they're at 6%. So it became so, uh, the, ex the yield expectation is so high, it deterred uh, REIT issuers. That's why we were also working on, on some other REITs like W Group, which is a good group, but uh, they postponed it. Well, so what will happen is the SMs, the Bellews, other, other real estate companies will do one maybe next year, hopefully, or the year after, especially when interest rates come out. That's a chance for them to, uh, to, to list again. Can you talk to us about the combined market capitalization of this sector? Where does it Sure. Start? Roughly, no, an estimate, uh, I would say they're roughly around 200 uh, billion for the for the eight or so. 
maybe the three or four will account for maybe 100, 150, but the others are there because it's around 20 to 10. No, the market cap per, per REIT is around 20 to 30. So just on the average of so the eight is 250, which is already a very good amount because we, there are other IPOs that are smaller. You're looking at an IPO of one or two billion and then total cap of seven or five. This one, this is substantial and that's why the, there's already foreign interest following these REITs because it's big enough, which was the design anyway. Uh, and that's why also now, for example, if you will sell now because of the minimum size, frankly, we haven't done it yet, but I want to try it. Because of property prices, for example, in Forbes, if someone sells one Forbes house, that could be one RIT already. Ah, yeah. Because that could be already a billion pesos, diba? So if you have three properties, lang, for example, uh, if you sell or your parents decide to sell, they can put it into a RIT and then there's there's a there's a tax advantage and everything. And uh, that would be also interesting already. Yeah, but <laughs> property prices, my gosh, my have they skyrocketed, right? Yes. So always yep. real estate. It's a really good investment. Um, you know, speaking of the different types of REITs, they're office, retail, energy, and industrial, but Philippine REITs in particular have a very large office exposure. Um, does this concentration or lack of diversification, does it um worry you amidst the declining um, occupancy rates as companies continue to try to downsize or right size? Okay, and that's a very good question. In fact, the reason we were doing mainly office reads for the first seven was because it was pre-COVID and we didn't know that, you know, work from home would happen. And, you know, that would seem like, a, you know, like something we would not even have thought of. So that was the flavor of the month. And that's why most of them are office reads. The nice thing, naman, and that's why these companies are resilient, they were able to replace their, uh, you know, the, the tenants. Uh, some, some of them experienced some reduction in tenant traffic, especially those with, I think one of them has a Pogo exposure, but I think it's they're gone already anyway. But it shows you they're resilient. And because they have these are large companies, they're able to inject more assets with different kinds of uh, mixes also. So that reduces the risk. Now, so there's a concentration there, but that was by design. But the nice thing is that because we have so many other kinds of reads that we can do, and that's the opportunity now. You know, the SMs, the Robinsons, the Philinvest, Ayalas, etc. They can do uh, real, uh, uh, you know, a hotel read. They can do a, a, a mall read. So that's easy. Uh, we just have to plan it for the right kind, the right time, the investor. So next year, and for example, if SM finally decides to do it, uh, initial talks, they were looking at doing mall reads. So at least it's a different kind. So there, there's okay. enough there in the in the portfolio of these clients of ours to, to come out with more. And we're taking a quick break. Keep it here on Follow the Money on the Billionario News Channel. We're back. You're still watching Follow the Money. SM Prime Holdings has deferred its REITs offering for now, citing volatile market conditions. But when could the wait-and-see mode end? Ed Francisco of BDO Capital weighs in. Everybody's waiting for the SM Investments um, REIT by way of, of SM Prime Holdings. You know, it's going to be the largest REIT offering in the country. <laughs> when can we expect that to come to fruition? Yeah, I all of course I've always been teasing my principles, but the thing with them is because they have so many, and I guess uh, proposals anyway that they're evaluating. So a rate is just one of the investment proposals or funding proposals they're evaluating. They have a they have a whole uh, menu of options. Uh, we hope that they'll still do one. It's more again more for the investors because those who are the loyal in, uh, SM customers would like to be able to buy one and invest one. So maybe hopefully next year or day or after, admittedly. But because they have their funding in place, there's no pressure, and that's why they postponed sure. it. No uh, and again, because it's yeah, interest or the rates year went. After? Or the year after? Wow. Okay. It's gonna yeah, be po well. possible. Yeah, possible. Anyway, the key also is if it, when interest rates go down, then it will be attractive again, right? Because if interest rates stay where they are, and then you want a premium, I think it would be too expensive for SM and Parang. My principals would say it's too expensive. Let's let's do the other options which are much cheaper. Correct. Correct. And um, well, 
they have the latitude to wait. Yes. A lot yes. of the latitude to wait and see and come into it when it's the best timing. Um, specific companies. Um, not all REITs are created equal. While some have soared, others are trading below their IPO price. Can you shine a light on the REITs that have been outperforming the market? And um, if you had to pare down REIT options down to just four, um, which investments, which REITs would you invest in? Okay. Um, now, maybe instead of, I, because again, they're, they're all my clients, so I, I, I hope they will not feel offended. So at least just from a personal side, at least uh, you might want, uh, if I were going to choose four, I would choose uh, Ayala REIT because it's the first, right? And then I would choose Mega World REIT, M REIT, because uh, this cabin has a large uh, runway, so as we call it. And then I would choose also the Robinson REIT. Uh, Robinson or Phil Invest. And then maybe just to diversify a bit, I would recommend doing the CRIT. So at least it's an energy. So three three or four properties and, and then one energy. Okay. So, so that'd be a good mix. Five million. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah five. So and then you get an average of around almost seven to seven and a half percent yield, Mikey, for that. Okay. Now in terms of market conditions and government policy, what do we need to see in order to grow this REIT market even further, to take it to new heights? In terms of government uh, incentives, there's nothing needed in the month for the REITs because it was nice of the SEC and the DOE have to support it. I guess what we just has, we have to see is... Uh, Interest rates go down. So when interest rates go down, right, there'll be increased sales of condos or whatever, or, or uh, even mall traffic, etc. Uh, as long as the cash flows increase, then that will mean that there'll be increased needs to raise capital, right? So if there will be increased needs to raise capital, especially now, as you see, right, a lot of the condos, uh, even the big developers have reduced their capex, and then they've really reduced the the ones in Manila, they're building outside Manila, di ba? Kasi it's slow, it might have slowed down in Manila. So once that has picked up already because the general economic sentiment, the Ayala's, Robinson's, you know, Phil Invest, etc., Double Dragons even, will now consider tapping REITs again. They're, or they will list their other assets, di ba? And that way, uh, then, then investors will have more options to invest in. Okay. Now, can you talk to us about the potential of REITs in terms of helping build the nation? Why should investors buy into the REITs? And, and when they do it, how do they help the country by and large? Okay. No, because the, the, REIT, the REIT itself, first of all, it's it, initially it was designed as real estate investment trust, right? But in reality, it can be anything with cash flows. So we just haven't done it yet. For example, uh, if we want to build more, uh, as long as there's a good deal, if we want to help the government build more railways, we could do a, a railway read. We'll just do the cash flows for the for the trains. As long as there's there's good enough steady cash flow, good enough fields. If we could even do an airport read, for example, for for Nermon Ang, for Naia, or even other airports, uh, and even for Bulacan. So so we can and then even for hospitals. If we want the government to do more hospitals outside the provinces, but if there are good cash flows, we can even do a read there. So, so we think out of the box. It is not just real estate, but anything with cash flows nga, that have steady cash flows. I hindi pwede yung volatile, mahirap. It, then we can we can put package it as a rit. In yeah. fact, here's another wild idea because I was in a meeting where uh, Secretary Gibotiodoro spoke. We can even do a you know a, an AFP modernization rit if they will do cash flows so of whatever something they do that has steady income then that's one way to modernize uh, the AFP or help develop the country. We're taking another breather. Stay with us here on the Billionario News Channel. Welcome back. We wrap up our conversation on REITs with some investing tips from BDO Capital's Ed Francisco. Take a look. If you had 500,000 pesos to invest in now, where would you put it? Okay. Uh, I, I guess it depends also what your risk appetite is. No, uh, If you want to be safe and you want to have a regular dividend, for example, um, 
you could just invest it, for example, in a REIT or in a corporate bond. If you don't mind getting 6% gross, so 500 times 6 is 30,000 pesos a year, divided by 4, 7,500 dividends a month, then even buying a Ayala, SM, or in fact, this morning we listed the Mainilad bond, you could get that from a Mainilad. Or you could buy a REIT also that's existing. Uh, if you, But then, of course, that's a fixed yield. If you want to be a little bit more, uh, I guess you're not expecting the returns today, but you want upside, that's when you buy naman an Ayala Corp or an mm -hmm. SM Prime because they're so cheap now, they're undervalued, and then they could go up 30 40% next year. But that's you know, man, there's no certainty there, so there's there's that risk. So it depends really on your uh, uh, investment appetite. Mike. Okay, now um, you know these are the traditional investments. What about yeah. the non-traditional ones? I mean, you know, first we've got the stocks, the bonds, the mutual funds, um, and the REITs. Uh, but what about the luxury asset classes? Re um, you know, fine art, wine, luxury collectibles, vintage mm -hmm. art. What do you think <laughs> about those asset classes? Okay. Uh, now, be before, kasi, I would say you invest lang in art because you like it, right? Uh, don't think of the price. In, in a way, that's still the how you should do it. Diba? Although, in admittedly, uh, I, may, I guess you uh, like siguro, uh, the boy, the, the boys. We have our, you know, we have our bat caves, we have our toys. So, if you bought a Patek three, four years ago, it's probably doubled. If mm -hmm. you bought a Porsche a few years ago, naghihinayin, ka if you sold it, like somebody I know, because uh, it, it went up almost 30 to 50% because of the, of the, the pandemic. Uh, a house, di ba? Mga Punta Fuego, before, uh, these rest houses weren't doing so well, but because mm -hmm. of pan the pandemic, nagtaasa ng gusto, and everybody wanted the rest house. So, sir, so you're right. These are... I guess more expensive items, but admittedly, uh, even these uh, uh, other asset classes, wag na muna property, but yeah, watches, di ba? even wines have been going up, right? But of course, you have to know your vintage, but but generally, but, but fine art and watches, yeah, have been going up. So they're still, it's good investments and you'll enjoy them. <laughs> ah, I hear you're investing in yourself and you're investing in your future. And before we go, we'll leave you with a quote from American businessman and investor Robert Arnott. In investing, what is comfortable is rarely profitable. And that's it for today's edition of Follow the Money. I'm Rain Musni. Stay curious, stay invested, and keep it here on BNC, the Billionario News Channel, always on top. <laughs>